very composed, dedicated, professional uh, Dr. Shamshat, uh, whom we have been seeing on the TV screen for many years, Jamal Shah, Murtaza Sulangi Saab, Gohar Saab. If I am not naming anyone, doesn't mean that I, I'm not acknowledging you. I'm just giving you a feel that I'm really proud that we have got one of the best team. I'm hopeful that Almighty Allah would enable us to lead and steer this nation in this entire period. I'm very well aware that we are here for an allocated time. We do not have some uh, perpetual uh, mandate uh, to serve this nation or country. But in given allocated time, hum koshish ye karenge ki koi foundations lay kare. Foundations lay kare where we have sense of continuation of national and international commitments with all the previous governments which we ha they have uh, given uh, to the uh, different forums. And in continuation of that, we will try to support the new initiatives, whatever the law and constitution allow us to do. Especially, uh, Special Investment uh, Facility Council, uh, this, this is a dream come true. Even as a child, when I used to think about Pakistan, we would have been told that Pakistan is a very mulk. Hai. Pakistan has very rich mineral resources. Hai. Or as hailing from Balochistan, we would take a lot of pride in our natural and mineral resources. But we never knew that what those mineral resources were. But a day has arrived when, thank God, with the support of all the institutions in which Pakistan military is in lead, uh, with its uh, ablest uh, leadership, to support, facilitate, encourage, and realize this uh, old national dream. My uh, view is that it is not an uh, idea or a dream of an institution an institution may be in the lead role, but it is collectively owned by around 2,500 million people of this country. So we all own it, we all support it, and we will all contribute jointly towards it. Dusra, uh, I know it's a, it's a polarized uh, society, and in this polarized uh, environment, we would try to differentiate uh, between politics and law. Uh, there is a rule of law and there is a rule of order. We would ensure that rule of order is not compromised in any way. Uh, rule of order would ensure and lead us towards the rule of law. If there is chaos, if there is anarchy, no governance system, no secular system, no religious theocratic system, whatever the people of a, a concerned territory wish to live it, with it, uh, you can't have that. So we know the sanctity of the order. That would be kept at any cost. Pakistan is owned and shared by all ethnicities, by all creed, by all religious backgrounds. Qadi uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, uh, his famous uh, speech of 11th August was a projection for the idea of a citizenry where no identity-based rights would be prescribed. Rights will not be given to the people on the basis of noun. Right? Rather, it would be allocated on the basis of adjective, on the basis of conduct, on the basis of character, on the basis of behavior. The best of the best has to come and excel in this society. There are many dreams uh, around the globe, but let's start having a vision of a Pakistani dream, and let's realize this Pakistani dream. Pakistani dream is the dream of our soul. It is imbibed by the ideas of Iqbal, the enlightened Iqbal, we would strongly discourage rigidity, be it in any form, in this society. 
We do not stand for the forces of darkness. Rigidity may come in the garb of religion or secularism or any other uh, form. These extreme attitude, they are not just unwelcomed, they would be discouraged. They would be curbed and controlled by the law. I have a deep sense that along with our economic challenges, which are huge, uh, with an able team like yourself, we will try to ensure financial discipline. Uh, we have a sense of sanctity of the taxpayers' money, this money on which we even are having today's meeting, having the, consuming this water, tea, uh, traveling, uh, doing any sort of actions. It is paid by the people of Pakistan. And we have that sense of sanctity towards them. By the common vendor, he contributes uh, towards our gathering. By a shopkeeper, by a civil servant, by a teacher, by a lawyer, they all contribute towards us so that we can deliver for them the social services. We can provide that secure environment for them. So that utmost duty, uh, inshallah, maybe it is for a month, two, three, I, I don't know, or three and a half, whatever the allocated time is, uh, we will demonstrate not through our words, but through our actions. Uh, the minorities, inshallah, uh, will stay protected in this country. There uh, may be an attempt to harm them from a section of uh, marginalized and peripheral uh, group of people, but that would be responded sternly and strictly by the state and society both. Pakistani state and society does not align and identify with such elements. They may be from us, but they are divorced from us. They are divorced from our identity process. We do not identify with them. We want to keep ourselves distant to them. One of the main uh, idea of uh, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's message with all the monotheist tradition, with all the Abrahamic tradition, is, was, and will remain the idea of dummy or zami or minority. They always envisioned that there would be a situation where your community probably would be in majority. So when you are in a majority, the minority has to be protected, not on the basis that they would convert to your worldview, not on the basis that they have to have the same kind of world outlook. They can differ with you, but the basic human dignity, the security, their uh, provision and sustenance has to be ensured by this divinely inspired idea. And Pakistan, alhamdulillah, uh, was created on those tayyaba and noble principles. Pakistan is the product of noble idea. Pakistan is a romance. And let's start realizing that romance with today's first cabinet meeting. I'm sure uh, uh, you would be given some task, and I expect that within uh, three to four days, uh, with all the inline departments, we will be having briefings, and uh, with Godspeed, we will start, inshallah, to deliver. Uh, last but not the least, uh, we, we have seen uh, some sabotage activities on May 9th. Uh, I would explicitly express uh, my not just discomfort, but it was an, uh, a way of disappointment that how and where did we reach on that day. Uh, not just that our military installations were attacked. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, let me remind you, when I was growing up, a new virus was emerged by the name of AIDS and it was acquired a minor deficiency syndrome. The nature of the virus was that it would attack uh, the immune system of the body. And then you could uh, have died, it would have been fatal, even for a very mundane diseases like flu. 
So for any polity, if its immune system is attacked, it leads towards its fertility. And in our context, these emblems, these symbols are important. Mm -hmm. These state symbols, when they are attacked, state doesn't disappear or vanish within a day or two or week. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And the initiation of that process, or an attempt at least to do so, uh, in my mind comes that it was exhibited on May 9th. Uh, we not just condemn it, uh, now we are in the role to ensure that justice is being done uh, and whosoever violated laws on those days would be treated by those laws. There won't be any favor, there won't be any fear. We will try to implement with justice and neutrality. Our core issue, Kashmir, uh, cannot be ignored as it does not lie in our memory or in mind. It lies in our soul. And body can uh, transform, soul can't. So for us, Kashmir is eternal. Thank you so much.